friends, it is Jenny. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. We are gonna have a little fun doing a nursery tour. What's looking good? What might you want to add to your garden right now? Even though it is November, this is still, especially here in the South, a great time to add some plants to your garden. So we have some really fun new things. A couple of new things that came in today. Cannot wait to share with you. Some of you have been anticipating this particular one for quite a while. So we're gonna walk through um, and show you updates on plants that we have growing up here, all sorts of fun stuff. And then we're gonna head down to the nursery and check out how the new greenhouse is coming along. It's very exciting. Oh, she's a beaut, that's all I can say. Now, um, Jerry, correct me if I'm wrong, on the new greenhouse, this is what the doors will be like or not? Yeah, yes. So on the new greenhouse at the nursery, the garden center, obviously this is, we're in the production area. This is the private production lot where um, customers they don't come because this is just right. This is production. This is the working place. So on the new greenhouse, on the structure, it will have two sets of doors like this where they just simply slide open. It is nice and warm in here because tonight and tomorrow we're supposed to get like one night's 29. So it is nice and toasty in here because it is a greenhouse and it's nice and warm. Even though we have it heated, I don't think the heat's on right now. It's not, this is just normal heat. Now, this my friends, this is what I am excited to share with you because, oh my goodness, this my friends is first night first night is a perennial purple grass those of you that have been around us for any length of time know how much i love vertigo grass vertigo grass is an annual purple fountain grass from proven winners and everybody said oh i wish it was a perennial well here you go. This was developed in the University of Georgia. There's been a whole um, kind of line, I believe they call them the, I'm gonna get this wrong, the royal line of grasses, something like that. I'll put the right name up there. But there was like Princess Caroline, all these different things. First night, because it's K-N-I-G-H-T, like a <laughs> night, um, is the latest and the most improved. So it is an absolute glorious, grass let me get my information here for you it is a penicetum it is gorgeous as you can tell it is um, going to be four to basically six and a half feet tall it is hardy in zones 7 to 11 for sun or park shade with moist soil so not that it needs to be soaking wet it is not a bog grass like you know like the papyrus grasses are but the more water you can give it the bigger it will get we actually have been looking at this one of our sweet customers turned us on to princess caroline which led us to first night also our heather who works with us has a lot of experience with first night and has used it and they're gorgeous in an urban setting environment so if they can survive right along asphalt and high traffic areas with cars and people walking by they will do great in your garden they are available they are in three gallon containers we found a local grower who has these um, he just brought them to us today if you are local from us and you are interested in purchasing some for this year, go ahead and get in your garden. We will have them available here at the nursery. We will also hope the plan is, as long as we can get the plugs, we will be growing them and have them available where we grew them um, come the spring. But this is just fantastic. They are gorgeous. Um, so, so exciting. So first night is a fun new addition that is ready. And then we also got, I'm gonna tippy toe back here because it's hiding another fun new grass. This is zebra. And zebra is a, let's see if I can hold it still for Jerry, is a miscanthus little zebra. It is a compact zebra grass, little zebra. Um, 
It is a fantastic, beautiful grass that will be three to four feet tall, two to three feet wide. It has silver and soft purple flower spikes. Um, with most grasses, you're gonna prune them in that kind of that late February into March, but just a beautiful plant. Um, again, so if you want to add some perennial grasses to your garden, um, these are definitely some certain options. And knowing what the size of first night will be versus the little zebra, I mean, I am all about some perennial grasses. But how beautiful would be the green with the, the variegated foliage of this with the first night behind it would be fantastic. Ever since we went to um, Four Star Display Gardens in Michigan this late summer and saw what Ian had done with all of those grasses, they were exquisite. Love annual grasses, perennial grasses. They have a place in your garden. So if you've never done grasses before, highly suggest that you add some to your garden we have talked about i showed you just was it last week i think the baby violas had arrived look at them they're all potted up we did two plugs two liners per hole for those of you that are in the industry this is an 1801 tray which simply means that there are 18 little compartments in this tray we have two plants per tray I mean, excuse me, per cell, and um, they have already grown quite a good bit. The customer um, who needs these does not need them until um, like January 1st because he's using this in a commercial property. So as of January 1st, um, the Christmas stuff goes out and these guys go in. So we have two months basically to get these ready for him, which is not gonna be a problem. Come on down here, I wanna show you some of the perennials that we are growing for y'all come they're ready now um, some of them need a little bit longer but here we have um, the queen of hearts fantastic shade loving perennial very comparable in its habit and, and um, growing requirements as a hosta but a completely different texture and look to it we've talked about her before along with jack of diamonds Jack of Diamonds is in the back. Tell you what, stay right there. I want to, while Jerry's right there, I want to show you the bit of difference between Jack of Diamonds and Queen of Hearts. Now, um, I think, is Jack a little older as far as planting wise, Jerry? Do you know? I really don't know. We're not sure. I think Jack may be a little bit older, meaning that it got planted earlier. So you can't give it a, a complete um, <laughs> comparison as far as size. Don't necessarily look at size, but this is Queen of Hearts. This is Jack of Diamonds. And if you can see, at least in these plants, those leaves, perhaps Queen has a little bit more silver overlay. They're extremely similar extremely similar um, in both the color and the texture. Let's see, um, and honestly, full disclosure, cause you know that's how I roll around here. Um, okay, so Queen of Hearts is gonna get a little bit bigger mature size, 16 to 18 inches tall, whereas Jack is only a 14 to 16 inches tall. So Queen will get a little bit bigger, um, the spacing is the exact same on it, except that um, the hardiness is still all the same. And I think Jack maybe has bigger leaves than Queen. But again, very, very similar. Fantastic to add to your shade garden. Um, but I thought that was neat to kind of show them to you at the same time. Cat's Pajamas, Nepeta, is coming along. Still not quite ready, what I would consider. I'd like to fill out that, this is a premium one gallon to fill out a little bit more. But the cat's pajamas, fantastic cat mint, beautiful blue flowers, smells amazing. It is a fantastic perennial. We could not keep that in stock this year. Y'all were grabbing it up like crazy. Then, <laughs> look at these beauties. You know what these are? Strawberries, these are the buried treasures. So these were um, grande size from Proven Winners that they, they didn't sell. So we're not gonna toss those babies out. So we moved them up. So there is the beautiful red. 
There is no difference as far as the fruit between the red, the white, and the pink strawberries. It's all about the flowers. So we had um, some reds, and then look at this. Oh my goodness. This is one happy plant right here. Look at that. This was one plant full of new growth, beautiful pink flowers. Again, this is a premium one gallon size. Um, if you're interested, you know, if you're local, we can certainly get these for you for this fall, um, but we will have them for the spring as well. But that is a beautiful plant with tons of new growth inside of it, gorgeous. So these are a perennial for us. That's why we're holding them over. Then look at the heaven scent. Oh my gosh, look at this. Let me go put Jack up. Jack's weighing me down. Look at this beautiful foliage on this shade loving perennial. So this is heaven scent or Jacob's ladder is its common name. I'm not even gonna pretend to do the scientific name. It's up there for you. Um, this is wonderful. Now, we talked about this when one of, the, of one of our last videos. Because this is only hardy to zone seven, we are a zone seven B, we treat this as a shade perennial, okay? Because our sun would just absolutely destroy this. But on the tag, it says full sun to part shade. And it is hardy in zones three to seven. So if you're a zone three or four, maybe even a five, it could be a full sun plant for you. We're zone 7B, so we are really pushing the limit to be able to have this plant. It does great though in dappled sun. Depending on where you are in the zones, the hardiness zones, what your climate is, that will determine whether you put it in full sun, part shade, or us, pretty heavy shade. Um, but it is a beautiful plant, does gorgeous, those gorgeous blue flowers in early spring, really fun, texture to it. It is glorious and great. We have some euchera, euchera, some people call it euchera, euchera, uh, coral bells. There you go. Um, this is the Fun and Games Hopscotch. Again, this is a part shade to shade loving perennial. It is only going to be 10 to 12 inches tall, so it's nice and petite, does fantastic in containers. I, in fact, I have found for us with our clay soil, Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But euchras do better for me in containers than the ground. Again, maybe I'm just weird and I don't know what I'm doing, but in our environment here, I just find that they do really well in containers. Gonna be hardy in zones four to nine. Beautiful color on it. Um, so much fun, especially fall colors. Really pretty fall colors. Add that to your garden. And then of course, the hellebore. The Lenten Roses, they are coming along really nicely, filling out fantastic. These are all part of the wedding gown series. Nope, honeymoon series. It has something to do with weddings. Um, this particular one is Rio Carnival. But Lenten Roses, Hellebore are fantastic. Again, shade loving perennials. We're in the greenhouse, so this is kind of where we have these shade loving perennials. Um, Evergreen, highly deer resistant because they have really tough kind of leathery leaves on them. They're called Lenten roses. They're not a rose at all, but because they bloom around the season of Lent. So late winter, early spring, in the parts of the country that have snow, they can have Lenten roses blooming with snow on the ground. So it's a really nice way to bring in some color before anything else is blooming in your garden. So that's what's going on over here. You wanna hop next door and see? He says to go this way, okay. He's directing me. We've got Shasta daisies that are growing, both Banana Cream 2 and I think Daisy May over here. We've got the Sweet Romance Lavender that has just been potted up, I think, this week. So these are nice little um, babies that come springtime. They will have the pot nice and full, of course. It's gotta love the lavender beautiful continuous bloomer fantastic color and of course the smell cannot beat the smell so let's mosey and close this greenhouse back up because we're letting out all the warm air so i'll let jerry go first and then you can look out on the shrub a lot look at those beautiful fall colors i don't know about you where you are but we have had 
a beautiful fall. The colors have just been really, really nice. You know, and for some, sometimes, some seasons, falls are better than others. But I mean, gosh, look at that. The oaks and the poplars and the, is that a sweet gum? Beach? I don't know what, that red. Sorry. My daddy taught me all the leaf shapes and I'm, I'm failing him right now with the red, with that kind of that oval shape. Hmm. Huh. Anyway, but speaking of fall color, these are a lot of shrubs in here. You can tell that they do not have to be as protected as next door. The reason we're really kind of keeping that greenhouse closed is for those grasses. We have a, um, a landscape job coming up and we want the grasses to look really pretty when we put them in. And with these cold temperatures for the next two or three nights, we want to protect them. These are shrubs. They are fine. They're tough. This is Sugar Shack Buttonbush. Look at that beautiful fall color on it. It is a fantastic shrub. It is a native and it can do, I'm going to make sure that I'm saying this right. It can do sun to shade. It can be moist. It can be a little bit dry. It does prefer a little bit more of a moist temperature. Zones of four to 10. I mean, winter, winter. There you go. Um, incredible hydrangeas and I'm, this is not meant to like give you details about every single plant into great detail I'm just showing you what we as a grower retailer have coming down the pike for you um, come springtime so we're just going to kind of run through this again if you are interested on I think all everything in here is proven winners so if you want some more information on a plant that I'm saying just go to provenwinners.com plug in the name and boom it'll tell you everything but I just thought it would be neat for y'all to see how we as a grower prepare plants for you in your garden because unfortunately plants just don't like magically appear somebody is behind the scenes growing these sweet things so we've got incredible balls right here this is one that I'm really excited about and is going to go into my yard somewhere around the patio. Um, this is Vanilla Spice. It is a summer sweet and man, does it live up to its name. Beautiful white flowers on it. Smells insane in a good way and the pollinators love it. Hardy in zones four to nine and sun to part shade. Fantastic. Three to six feet tall, three to five wide. I love this plant um, and in fact I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you remember a couple weeks ago when I was by the patio and I planted that empty bed and I put Stentlandia and the desert plains and the um, Shasta daisies in there I thought I was planting vanilla spice I got the plants mixed up in my head about which one I wanted and I was thinking that Stentlandia was vanilla spice but really it wasn't and but it's all right. It is all good because Scentlandia is actually a better plant for that spot because it doesn't get as big as Vanilla Spice. So Vanilla Spice is going to have to go in there somewhere, maybe in a new bed. But I love this plant so much that it's going to go in there. So just full disclosure, even people like me plant the wrong thing and think that one plant's another plant and it's really not. This is like Butterfly Bush Alley through here. Butterfly bushes, of course, are wonderful for attracting the but not only the butterflies but the pollinators all butterfly bushes bloom on new growth so come late winter early spring everybody's going to get a haircut going to get trimmed down and get nice so that way when they're coming out of their winter slumber and going out into spring they will get nice and full and flush so if they're a little gangly right now it's okay because come really into February, March, they're going to get haircuts and they will be very, very happy. These are all right here are Miss Molly's, which are a little bit of those bigger sizes. Um, I think we've got more, but I mean, you know, we could sit up here all day and talk about um, shrubs and plants and because it's just so much fun. But let's go check out the new greenhouse because I think you're going to be really excited. I know I am. All right, my sweet friends. So we are down here at the nursery on the shrub lot. We're gonna mosey on up here to the greenhouse. But first, I forgot to tell you that this morning, early, I would say bright, it wasn't bright, it was dark. Dark and early at seven o'clock this morning, we got a new shrub order 
in because I know that a bunch of you have been wanting some more sunshine ligustrums. So they are in as is. Look at this huge block. I think we got 40 of them. The Fairy Trail Bride Hydrangeas. So I know people were waiting on these because the ones that we had gotten, we sold out really quickly. Thankfully, we were able to grab 40 more. So if you are have forgotten or didn't hear that video about the Fairy Trail Bride, Fairy Trail Bride is the first cascading hydrangea. It is fantastic. It will be a four by four hydrangea. Will be great for a really large container. Do it as a specimen plant, meaning just like one as a focal point, or use it in a nice mass planting. Because remember, especially if you have like big areas, when you plant the same plant in groups, multiples in the same group, it makes a big impact from a distance. So Fairy Trail Bride will be a fantastic addition. Super excited about these. Cannot wait to see how they do next growing season. So without further ado, let's talk about the greenhouse. Can you see it? I'm sure you can. <laughs> She's a big one. Somebody was asking in social media, they're like, what are you gonna name her? I don't know. So if you have any good ideas for names of the greenhouse, I mean, why not? Sure, let's have some fun. And uh, I said Big Bertha, I don't know. But so this is what a double A-frame gutter connected greenhouse looks like. And so our sweet guys are here working um, and they are right now actually putting on the gutters. It is called a gutter connected for a reason. It's a double A-frame because the shape of it, right? It looks like an A. It's double because there's two gutter connected because not only on the outside, both outside lengths of the greenhouse, but also down the middle will be a gutter. So just like your, your house probably has rain gutters on it, so does this greenhouse. Um, nice and big because of course with the with the roof we'll have a lot of when it rains the water runoff you don't want the water coming straight down just like on your house right and so all of that will get channeled out the back and there is like a downspout on the back gutter but to give you a little idea on size these posts are 12 feet tall so basically 12 feet from the ground to where the trusses are attached. They are in the ground, three feet, nice and concreted in. They are sturdy and strong. This is a really, um, really fun, really big greenhouse, especially for this space. Now on the two sides, the two lengths of the greenhouse, we will have the roll-up curtains. So just like in the production area where we have the roll-up curtains, um, this two will have the same thing. But at the production lot, those roll-up sides only go maybe four and a half feet, four, four and a half feet up in the air. Here, they will go the entire length. So it will be really easy for customers to be able to walk through lots of good airflow in here. Super excited about that. Um, but let's come around the front so I can kind of give you an idea of the general overview. And I know because people always ask, where do we get our greenhouses? We have gotten all of our greenhouses from Atlas Greenhouse. They're in Georgia. Our sweet guys are from Georgia also. They're amazing. So this is where I was telling you about the doors from the production lot that had the sliding doors. There'll be a set here and then there'll be a set on the other bay as well. But once you come inside the greenhouse, it's open. There won't be any walls going down the center. It'll be just how it is right now. So big, huge, wide open spaces. If you remember, we are gonna have a concrete floor pad um, will be installed. That's like a four inch thickness, I think. So once you get in the greenhouse, it's gonna be huge and open. In fact, yesterday when they were putting the trusses on, I told Jerry, I was like, oh my gosh, Jenny's not gonna be able to reach the hanging baskets. So we're gonna have to come up with some sort of um, system to hang the hanging baskets on, but lots of great options. We will, of course, have tables in here, but we can just be really versatile on how we need to use our tables. 
Maybe we'll have them on rollers and we can move them around. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. We do know that, of course, on the inside of the greenhouse, we'll have tables. And then on the outside of the greenhouse, we'll have tables as well on this side, except for in this bay, on this side, this one will be open as far as being able to walk through because we want to have customers not only be able to have to come in through the front, but also be able to come out the side. So when you see something over at the pines, you have easy access and you can go check that out over there. So this, we know that this bay will be open as far as a walk through um, and we'll take care of all the necessary things that we need to do. So that's exciting. Then back here, to give you um, a little bit of perspective, Jerry, if you come here, so that way we can show you, show them like the depth of the irrigation room, supply room. I don't know what we're gonna call it. So here we're standing outside of the greenhouse, right? So this is the back wall. And we've talked about before when we were taking down the, the greenhouses first, the first greenhouses, how the fertigation system and all that was up front. We're gonna move it back here to the behind the greenhouse so it doesn't take up growing space. So Jerry can keep what well, he's going to build a little shed type building structure outside of the greenhouse. This is where all of his water is. We'll have power, so forth and so on. So that way it won't take up valuable space in the greenhouse because you know what customers need to see all that. They don't. Um, there will be a door that we can choose to put on either bay. Um, depends on how we do the structure of that building. We may have one of those other sliding doors either on this bay or the other one. Time will tell. Um, I guess that we'll have to decide that here in the next coming days so that they can get the framework put up. Um, but again, super, super excited about this. Let's just, let's just go on back down this way because we knew that she was gonna be big, right? I mean, a 48 by 48 is, we have gained a lot of square footage in, in growing. But once you see that it goes 12 feet in the air and then the trusses are on top of that, it is just, it makes the pergola look tiny. Whereas before the pergola was definitely the tallest piece out here. So the pergola <laughs> looks, I don't say dinky, it does not look dinky, but it definitely looks a lot smaller. The barn looks a little bit smaller. Um, it's gonna be a big, huge presence. I cannot wait to see um, how it all comes together. What's gonna be on top of the roof and the sides will be a hard, what kind of material will that be, Jerry? Polycarbonate, Polycarbonate sheeting, right? So um, not, like on the barn, we had the metal, metal tin roof. This will be the polycarbonate sheeting. Um, so not exactly clear like glass, but you obviously we'll let the sun and all the, all the good things come through. So that is an update here at the nursery, a little garden tour, a little greenhouse update. We will keep you updated on this greenhouse because man, when these guys are here, they are here and they are working hard and getting lots of good stuff done. But as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.